All right, Eric, we are ripping and raring, and we are ready to go. I didn't get to talk to you about this. No, I was very upset. I was very upset I had to miss. But here I am. You wake up Monday morning. Yes. And CJ Gardner Johnson is a lion. Oh my gosh. What is going through your mind, my man? <sighs> Brad Holmes, you did it again. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. I was ready to go to sleep, but then here comes that Bob show. And he was, I remember we were talking about some veterans and free agency yep. players that we were interested in. And my quarter that I wanted was Jamel Dean. Yep. But CJ Gardner Johnson was another one I was interested in. And you couldn't find a better addition for what this secondary needs. This was a unbelievably shocking sh- signing that I'm so hype about. This is a perfect fit. And, oh, yes, it, this, this is perfect. It is. Right? Like, yes. when you talk about a secondary, you can, depending on what you do in the draft and who you bring in as far as, like, athletic linebackers and edge players go, like, it's not out of reason to think you could play a nickel defense consistently. Yep. Absolutely, you can. Tracy Walker will be back from injury at some point. Mm-hmm. Kirby Joseph, CJ Gardner Johnson, Cam Sutton, Emmanuel Mosley. Five names that we just ripped off right there. But we left somebody out. We did. And there's, n- there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, we left two people out because one of those names. It's somebody who deserves it. I don't think I don't think Jerry Jacob is going to be taking a Amani Awarie type regression. I but somebody who did have a bit of a regression in the second half of the season is Jeff Okuda. And that's a problem because to me, I don't know where he fits in this long term plan, dog. I really don't. Like I've you OD this much on like it would make it would be one thing if they get one or two corners. You got three guys. That puts him out. And Jacob played really good last season yeah. when he came off injury. And re-signed Will Harris. And you just not re-signed they Will Harris. They have a very deep quarterback room. Yes. Like, and, we pitched... Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You want me to go? Okay. Yeah, I uh, we pitched. We pitched the idea of, like, being aggressive in the draft. I think Jeff Okuda is going to be one of the more interesting pieces that some of those teams in the top five could use. Arizona don't have a great secondary. They could maybe use him on a one-year rental deal. Like, I wouldn't mind that. In this position right now, even with the corners they have on one-year deals like Mosley and C.J. Garner-Johnson, there's still guys who could be in your future plans if they oh, yeah. pan out correctly. Oh, yeah. So I don't see where Okuda fits in that. I think he's going to be dealt on draft day, honestly. I don't see him coming into the season as a Lion next year. That's interesting. Because you said that, you said that, you like, you commented on the live that you didn't think he would be around. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wish you were just here so that I could just be like, please unfold this <laughs> onion for me. <laughs> the versatility that they have created in the secondary is insane. Yes. Gardner Johnson can play inside, outside, safety, corner. Okay. Lined up at safety in 61% of his snaps last season, mm-hmm. which was the most in his career because he had been playing corner. You also have a second year player in Kirby Joseph who played a really good safety for you. Shout out Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> but also was a quarterback in college. Mm-hmm. You also have. Jeff Okuda, and I'm going to play devil's advocate on him just a little bit. Okay. Number one, very good tackler. In fact, his best grade defensively, according to PFF, is his tackling ability. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the regression second half of the season. It was his first full season in the NFL. That's true. How much did that take a toll on him? That's true. Like, I get the production wasn't there. And he graded out horribly, right? He was a 59.4 PFF overall defensive grade. 54.4 in coverage alone. Mm -hmm. But he's only 24 years old. That's true. And he's on a rookie deal with the ability to pick up a fifth-year option. He could still be in their plans. Especially... Especially if Sutton and Mosley ball out. Because what's being forgotten, I think, in all these team-friendly deals, what's stopping them around week nine going, hey, Mose, I was three years. 
30 million south. Yep. Sign me up. Let's go. Right? Very possible. Yeah. Extend it. Hey, I'll, Sutton. How's a couple more years and 20 million south? You know what I mean? I, like, yeah. And then you put and, Okuda in the slot. He's only a slot corner to help and run support. His best strength. Move him to safety, then, if that's the case. Because he's, huh. he's getting lost in coverage. He was getting benched a lot. I'll give him credit. This was weird, actually. To start the season, he was one of the few shining pieces when this defense was looking at its all-time worst. He was one of the few players that was actually shining. But then Aubrey Pleasant was uh, cut. He went to yeah. the Packers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And since then, he kind of just took a step back. The only the only real standout game that I can remember he had was when he had that pick six against Justin Fields. But, I mean, it's right. Justin Fields, so picking him off is not hard. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. I right. still believe that it just it creates a bit of so, – so, yes, even if he does have that upside – the depth around him is going to make it hard to be what we're expecting. And if, unless your, your expectations are clearly very low at this point. So they're, they're low. Like he's not a yeah. starter in my mind. He might be your okay. starting nickel corner. Okay. And I think like if I were putting a secondary out right now, depending on Mosley's health, health, right. Mm -hmm. I'd have Kirby and CJ Gardner Johnson in the back. So, okay. and then Mosley at your corners. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to a nickel package, you bring Okuda into the slot. Because as okay. a slot corner, you're not asking him to really trail down the field without help. If you have to right. cover a, a slot receiver on a seam, guess what? You have over-the-top help. It's a lot easier to hire right. a guy in coverage, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but I feel like, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to hide a guy in coverage from the slot than it is on an island one-on-one -on -one with some of the best... I mean. He went up against Justin Jefferson and shut him down. That was his crowning achievement of the season, for sure. DK Metcalf went off on him, even though, he, yeah. like, I was at that Seahawks game, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like DK Metcalf went off on him. Yeah, it you didn't. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, it yeah. wasn't like, but he still had, like, a buck 40, I think, in a number of receptions. Yeah, Gino was going nuts. I think it's easier to hide him in coverage as a slot corner to help and run support. Or like you said, maybe make him into a free safety, strong safety where he can just crash down. But the conversation is not Okuda. The conversation is CJ Gardner Johnson. Yes. This is a he, steal. This, this is, is pure steal. villainry. Yes. Like this this is the definition of villainry. Yep. Highway he robbery to, in a lot of ways. He he wanted to he reportedly wanted to be back in Philly. They couldn't come to agreement on a deal. Uh, ops for a one year trial with us gets to reunite with his former defensive coordinator from the Saints in Aaron Glenn now. And you're going to have coach a much on the Saints, Dan Campbell. So he knows him yeah, as well. Exactly. Yes. And with the resources to make your D line and your linebacking core even stronger, we should be seeing some, but some. Uh, progression from him but what it's going to look like and even if it is in the nickel position is that enough to hold on because Jerry Jacobs is doing that just fine and he's going to be a lot cheaper so sure I, I don't know I, the word of the night is flexibility right where you weren't flexible coming into the off season you have Brad Holmes I say you but it's literally Brad Holmes and that's it Brad Holmes has done a phenomenal job creating positional flexibility in the secondary. Yes. And that's important. There's depth because you feel comfortable like, hey, Curb, we need you to drop down at corner for a minute while CJ and Tracy take the backside because Sutton's not recovering from injury, right? Then he hasn't mm -hmm. played corner in the NFL, I get it, but he was a pretty darn good cornerback for the Illini. Mm -hmm. Right. One year, $8 million. Though. I can't get over that number. No. 25 it, years old. <laughs> the heart of his prize. It started his prime, if you be honest. Yeah. I was going after Tremaine Edmonds because he was 25 years old. Why did I not? Like, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. Like, what was I thinking in these suggested targets? 
probably didn't think it was possible. We probably thought well, he was going to yeah. just go back to Philly and keep that defensive core strong. But but then comes know, to Detroit and says that we have a better roster than Philly. Yeah. What? It's crazy. Because even because he's very good, but the guys they kept in front of him were very like Slay's older. He's good. They gave him they cut him, gave him two more years, and then let CJ Gardner Johnson walk out the door. I the Lions. It seems like for the past few regimes, they've gotten into these like quasi like you know uh, versatile DBs that can play safety and quarter. Yeah. Whether it was uh whoa, God, what's his name? I'm thinking of Bill Bentley, who they tried to do Quadre Diggs, who they moved back and forth before Which, somebody traded him like an idiot. But yeah. now you have a proven. <laughs> unbelievably talented guy that's going to be very versatile, a leader, vocal. He's going to be everything this defense and this secondary needs. He's already making waves. You see his tweet on Thursday? Which no, which one? What did he say? All right, so Austin Bryant was a defensive end for the Lions. He wore number two, who signed with the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah. And he, t- he retweeted the news and said, so I guess I got dibs on number two? <laughs> with like a confused face. Like <laughs> with that, I like it. Like I'm cool I'm with good. that. Like yeah, Austin Bryant wasn't a factor. He had no. injury issues. Like it's he not did. like he's like, yo, Hutch, I want 97, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, you could have two, buddy. That that's no one's gonna fight you for that. You earned that. You got it. Are you still interested in a quarterback in the draft because of this? <sighs> to be honest with you, no. Like, if there's only one guy I really would love. It would be like Joey Porter Jr. Just because I think he has unbelievable upside with his long arms and his skill set as a tackler and a cover. But honestly, no. Like, I'm not looking at it as, okay, we have to have one like early. We really need to make sure we get one that's going to promise and pan out. I'm not looking at it like that anymore. If they get a corner, cool. But it's not a pressing need, and I don't think I think the Lions looking at it the same way at this point. Honestly, uh, I'm kind of like add depth to a strength, right? Right. So in a way, I'm I'm I'm, I'm still very torn on on this. Still very torn on it because I'm like. If Christian Gonzalez is available at 18, do you take Christian Gonzalez? Sure. You know what I mean? If Joey Porter Jr. is available at 18. Now, obviously, it depends on what you did at at 6. If they take the idea of trading up for number 3 to take Richardson, then you've got to go defensive interior at 18. Mm-hmm. But I don't really know. I don't really know if it impacts the draft strategy. I don't think it's a... I don't I don't think you spend one of your top three picks on a quarterback. And no. in fact when we when we get to our draft sleepers here in a little bit, I'm gonna give you the second highest rated corner according to PFF that's eighty one on their big board. Mm-hmm. That's a sleeper. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. We'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. the the the, the stoking of the fire of excitement just keeps happening. It does. And then yesterday they clear all this other cap space. And you're like, okay, uh-oh. What's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. What Mad else Brad played? is up to something. <laughs> this was it. This is one of the biggest surprises. And again, it's for the cheap. They're not in a position where they're crippled on any contracts no. where... They can't maybe take a a risk or a gamble or something like at this point, everything is out on the table. I it's a flawless execution of this free agency by Brad Holmes. Flawless execution is the perfect descriptor. Flawless Flawless. victory. (laughs) 